Welcome to Spectacles. I'm Ellen Rogers. And I'm Betsy LeBeau. Well, this lingering downturn in our economy has really hurt small businesses tremendously. That um, we can be driving around and you see for sale sign and you know close sign and our relocated or move signs. And um, with us today is a local businesswoman woman who has ridden that roller coaster for 20 years mm. with, which is, I'm so glad, her open sign firmly planted. <laughs> With us today is Judy Frankel of Frankel Antiques in Detroit. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. 20 years. 20 years. Oh, wow. 20 years. Yeah. What, um, when you open, tell us about your, your opening and how that came about. It's actually uh, kind of a cute story. I, when I was first married eons ago, I antiqued yeah. a little bit and then didn't for a very long time. About 22 years ago now, my husband and I bought a farm in Metamore, and as I was decorating the farm, I wanted some interesting pieces and folk art and so on. So I went back to antiquing, because it's the only way to find it. And I found that I loved finding cool stuff, I just didn't want to own it. Therefore, I went into business, and I took over an old, an empty um, yogurt store, and a girlfriend helped me with green sheets, and we made it into a gallery and I had my first show, which was over a two-week period. And that's how I started. Wow. And where was that? That yeah. was at Long Lake and Telegraph. Um, and I, it was a yogurt store? It w had been a yogurt store, okay. yes. Like a frozen yogurt store. Exactly, okay. right. exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I did. I had another, I was working at the Somerset Inn at the time. I was their full-time catering manager. So I did well enough that first time to have some money to cover my expenses, enough to buy some more stuff. And uh, six months later, I took over another empty store at Maple and Telegraph with a leak in the back. We <laughs> took the same green sheets <laughs> and we did it again. The second time I did it, I was wondering, because the first time all my friends and relatives, of course, bought things, what was gonna happen the second time? And indeed, I had real people. Ah. Real customers come, and within a year after that, I actually went into business. So this is, I know I've just heard this phrase, which I wasn't, these pop-up stores, and um, th you were one of the first pop-up yeah. stores. I guess so. I never heard the phrase. I wouldn't have thought of myself that way because I didn't know. Right. <laughs> pop-up stores are like on Halloween just when you see on. the, yeah, you know, right. there's ah, a store okay, and, comes, right. and it's right. just for the Halloween. Halloween. Or the plant stores, right. they're uh -huh. pop-up stores. Mm -hmm. I guess and, um, I was. I, yeah, and there you go. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I know. I know who you were. So what? So you turned an interest into a pa well, passion, an interest, uh -huh. a pastime into a career. Yes, exactly. Um, I love retail. Didn't know that when I was going to college, but um, I love the whole process of selling. Mm -hmm. And uh, antiques is just another retail business. Yeah, Even right. the catering, mm -hmm. managing. That's mm -hmm. really a form of retail. Mm -hmm. And I started out, um, after I did these two little shows, I started to do antique shows also. Mm. And everything was in my basement. And my husband yeah. said, you know, get it out. So I got a little space, the same area where I am, but in a, the garden level of the office building. You should excuse yeah. me, it was in the basement. Wow. <laughs> I had about 500 square feet and I was open one day by appointment, um, and about a year later, I decided that this was what I wanted to do, and uh, so I resigned from the hotel and opened uh, three and a half days a week, oh. and expanded slowly, 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 and then 10 and a half years ago, the space <laughs> where I am now, which is 10,000 square feet, became available. Goodness. And the open sign indeed has been on low these many years. Mm. So you sound like you sounds like you had a great support system mm -hmm. that your husband supported. Tell us about your family during yeah, that time. Let's hear. Uh, when I first went into this business, my children—I have a son and a daughter—were grown. Uh, my husband was fully supportive when I first did it. You mean the first time you had it? The very my yeah. very your first yogurt. little yogurt yeah. store. <laughs> Uh, he and I each put in a very small sum of money. To this day, he tells me I haven't paid him back. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not going to. Oh, that is so funny. Yes, totally supportive. I'm sure you have it otherwise. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
maybe not. Yeah, no, I mean, we'll have to ask him. I know the I'm antique business sure is right. kind of, there's a lot of hauling back and one, forth. One of the yeah. greatest stories is talk about, my, at the time I didn't have a van, which one needs in the antiques yeah, business. Right. My son had an SUV and I was doing for the very first time the Ann Arbor's antique market. Oh, right. And in those days, you had to be there at five in the morning or you six mean the in the Celine morning or something. Thing? The yes. Celine oh, Ann Arbor so show, good. exactly. My husband was up at our farm. My son, who was, I think, about 18 or 19 at the time, was nowhere to be found with his car keys. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. So I had to call my husband, Stanley, to come in to save me and give me yeah. a car <laughs> so I could go up to Ann Arbor. But they've been great. My um, uh, husband, you, when I was um, shopping, I shop in Europe hmm. primarily. And in the beginning, I shop mostly in England. Mm -hmm. And Stanley was my driver. Mm -hmm. We uh, schlepped around that country from the midsection of England, south, east, and west. We covered every little town. Wow. Well, How that, fun leads that, me to would my, be. that leads yeah. me to my next question then. How do you know what to buy? It's eye. a great question. <laughs> when I first started uh -huh. in the business, I decided right then and there that I wanted to buy decoratively. I didn't want to buy just porcelain or furniture or something like that because it wasn't as much fun mm -hmm. for me. So in the beginning, um, you learn as you're going along. I have a pretty good eye. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, th I think like an interior designer, though I'm not, mm -hmm. but it just is the way I, I think about furniture and so on. So as I learned where to go, how to change the places that I went to, you see different things. You never know exactly what you're going to find. Once it became more established, and my main customer is the interior designer mm -hmm. or the person who's, who's uh, decorating with antiques, so now they tell me what to look yeah. for them uh -huh. and what I find along the way. I also have very good people in Europe who work for me who do a lot of pre-looking. So, so you go all over Europe now? Now Not I go London to England, England yeah, Belgium, yeah. France, Holland. Where's the best? There is no best. Okay, yeah. there is no best. Available. It's different right. Every in each time. place. Right. Mm -hmm. So, do you always buy what you like? I mean, no. Say that'd be hard for me. I'm like, yeah. I have to like this. Yes. I have to no. Well, I no. don't buy anything that I really don't like. I mean, dislike I unless that. somebody wants yeah. it specifically. Yeah. Um, and people ask me all the time, "Don't I want to take this home?" No. <laughs> Mostly I don't, because I love the selling part of right. it also. Right, right, right. Uh, but I buy to sell, uh -huh. and it is a kick when mm -hmm. people come in, and they love this piece. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful feeling. And how do you know how to price it? Ah. That was a hard <laughs> thing. <laughs> ah. um, it's, it, it's a process, uh -huh. and it is what you have to do is try to figure out what your costs are, mm -hmm. what you can sell it Mm -hmm. My prices are just about the best in the business mm -hmm. in the entire country because good. I don't have any desire to mark it up like most of my competitors do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want the interior designer to be able to make money on, mm -hmm. on what That's I good. sell and I want my retail customer to get the best value. That so they it's can mostly the volume piece. that you do probably. You yes. work on that. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, why did was it a childhood interest of antiques? Did your mother was your mother in it? Why antiques? Uh, it was because of the farm, mm -hmm. absolutely because of the farmhouse. Uh, I remember when I was first married, I had a girlfriend who loved to antique, mm -hmm. who slept me around with her a little bit, and I didn't pay any attention mm -hmm. to it at all. Quite honestly, my mother always had antique pieces in the house, paid no attention to it <laughs> at all. This is the truth until I started to do the farm. And the process of finding pieces for the farm was pretty intensive. Mm -hmm. I went not only locally, but I went different parts of the United States and loved it. She's a retail person. Mm. Just loved it. Right, I am right. a retail person. And then she found what to do exactly. retail with, right. and then exactly there it goes. Correct. Right. right. How about art? Do uh, you do art? I don't. I one. I now have only one um, tenant left. Um, his name is Ron Pavlich, and he sells fine art. Mm -hmm. I sell uh, prints 
and interesting things. I love framed textiles. Mm. So I don't actually look for art when I go. I don't sell jewelry mm -hmm. either. Too so many do, little pieces. That would be, yeah. So antique mm -hmm. is pretty broad. Have I you? sell furniture, lighting, mirrors, decorative accessories of all kinds. Mm. You could decorate one shelf. You could decorate a room. Mm. You could do a whole house in my store. Wow. Absolutely. So because the of the volume. Right. And have. the growth. Now, yeah. did you moved to Troy because of the, the size of the location? So I, so when I was in my little feet. space, I then moved across the hall. It was in about 600 square feet. I moved across the hall. And I had, I think, about 15 or 1,800 square feet. And about 11 years ago now, the space that I'm in, which had been a drugstore, became mm -hmm. available. I decided, do it. So I moved there. No business plan, by the way. Uh, you know, I tell people say, you know, you've been doing quite well. I uh -huh. said, it's because I had such a wonderful business yeah. plan. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, right, right. From right. the seat uh, of yeah, my yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when I first moved into the antique center, I actually had other tenants. I had a multi multiple dealer space, and I had a couple of other dealers who had their own space. At one point, Bose was a, a oh, tenant oh. of mine. When Frank Bowes passed away and the business was no longer, I decided instead of renting it that I wanted it all myself. Oh. So I took over mm. all the space. And that's really how I it grew. happened. Mm -hmm. My mother's an antique dealer, and mm -hmm. she started with renting a shelf from someone like you. Then, then it was a counter. Then it was <laughs> a location. And, right. And she, too, she doesn't really, she, our, our whole home was antiques. Uh -huh. But she likes the sell. She, it's done. Very quickly, she's done with it, and right. then it goes to the store. Uh -huh. And she's unusual, too, because a lot of antique dealers, certainly when I first started, I don't know about your mom, many of them started because they collected all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and right. They had and they had, a play yeah, they had a lot to sell. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. And they do a garage sale or an estate sale. However they it started. Goes. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, what we're, we're going to take a break in just a minute, but um, tell us maybe what the most interesting piece has been that you've collected. That I've collected? Yes. That I've that collected personally? And sold. And, and sold. Uh -huh. The most interesting piece. You know, uh, it's hard to say mm -hmm. what it is because I sell so many kinds of things. I think the most interesting pieces for me that I sell are some of the architectural pieces. So, yeah. Uh -huh. the really yeah, because, old. Because, yes, the they're century. so, some of them are quite weird. Uh -huh. um, I have right now, for example, a bunch of foundry molds. I mean, oh, they're, yeah. it, some of them are so strange. Uh -huh. I what, have, what is the foundry mold? I don't know. They, the they use them in factories to mold whatever the parts were. There's Pieces. one mold that actually looks like a piston because it was a mold uh -huh. for a piston. I have had, uh, it's, uh, a couple years ago, I had a bunch of little pieces that all had to do with fishing. Well, who knew? Who knew, A thing yeah. to undo knots and oh, so gosh. on. Well, those are, yeah, those are interesting. We're going to take a short break, Judy, and we're going to come right back. Okay.